In this video, I'll be walking you through the first sessions of work on a new canvas that will be based on one of my street photos. Here's my original photo. This was taken in my grandfather's hometown of Lucca during the September Festa. Of course, the young woman and the lighting behind her formed a promising scene and I made shots from several angles. In the studio, it became my job to modify this image for use as a painting reference. I knew that the plastic bin had to go, so I used Photoshop to patch over it with a basket of waffles from a different exposure. This will also help frame the figure when I crop to my canvas dimensions. I experiment with moving some of the light bulbs around. It's a crude mock-up, but it serves the purpose. From here, I follow my usual method of discarding color and applying a posterize filter. This is the image I'll send to the digital projector. I really don't want to take too much information. All I want is some of the important value shapes around the figure and parts of the basket, and I'll be simplifying and redesigning those as I draw. Everything else in the composition I'll plan to improvise. The posterized image is just four values, white, a light gray, a darker gray, and black. I focus on capturing only the most important edges and omit as many as possible. I don't want to get bogged down with something too complex. Here's my finished drawing. I have just a bare minimum of guidelines without cluttering up my canvas with useless marks ones that I would have to ignore while painting. After sealing the drawing with fixative, I'm going to tone the canvas with a mix of burnt sienna and black. While this is still wet, I'm going to begin to suggest where some of the most important darker tones will be. Although it's tempting to begin blocking in the image, I'm going to stop here and let this toning dry. About 48 hours later, I can start blocking in the picture without worrying about accidentally lifting the base tone. Still working with burnt sienna mixes, I'll build up some of the darkest areas first. Staying between the lines is not a priority, and in fact, I'm happy to have some tones spill over boundaries. This will help prevent me from making hard edges too soon. So far, all of my colors are classed as transparent, or semi-transparent, or I will thin them with enough painting medium to keep them from obscuring my drawing. During this phase, it's almost like painting a watercolor.
I'm still looking at my posterized reference. Although I'm starting to look at the color version also, as I begin to try out new hues in my medium value washes. Anytime I put down something I don't quite like, or which is beginning to block my drawing, I'll give it a little rub with my rag. With a smaller brush, I'll start to replace some of my drawing marks with painted marks. I want these to be dark enough to show through subsequent layers. I have no intention of rendering these baskets in any detail. I just want some believable small shapes that will give the impression of baskets and provide a foundation for any sketchy strokes I might decide to do later on. I know from studying my reference that the brightest spots in my picture, by far, are the bare light bulbs. I also know from experience that in order for those lights to glow, there's going to need to be a halo around them, and I'll pre-stage that by surrounding these shapes with yellow-orange. Behind that, some of the most intense color is going to be the red underside of the canopy. So rather than muddy that area up, I'm going to lay out that area with a light value orange. In my reference, the canopy red ends just above her head. But I'm going to let it continue right across the picture. This is as good a time as any to block in the nearly pure white for those bulbs. I'll use a good amount of paint and a big stiff brush. The medium I'm using has a bit of dryer in it and I can expect those strokes to set up overnight. These bulbs will provide a benchmark going forward because nothing else in the picture can be as bright. Since I have this batch of near white mixed, I may as well add the next brightest shapes. In this case, the posterized reference reminds me that nowhere on this girl's face do any highlights exist except a few tiny shapes on the edge of her silhouette. Whoa! Did you see that? I just violated my value system by putting a very bright shape where it doesn't belong. That will have to be fixed. These bags are going to be a challenge to keep simple, but I'll give myself a starting point by blocking in some light shapes.
Right here I made a decision to force that one bag into a more upright position so that it won't mirror the angle of her arm and might help define the end of her ponytail. Now I'm going to shift to a cooler gray mixture for the apron. Even though the apron is white, I can tell by my reference that it is a duller bluish tone that is not receiving any of the warm light from the bulbs, but is instead receiving light from the darkening sky. I'll keep this thin and leave behind the darker bits in anticipation of further glazes and opaques. But this shouldn't compete with the intensity of the background. Here I can add a little more opacity to the lighter parts and adjust the exposure of my reference image to show me where those parts are. At this point, I've established my basic value and color map, and I'm ready to take a break. But before I set this aside to dry, I'll take up a small brush and make a few more landmarks for the next phase. I'm ready to put in more intense color. This will be semi-transparent over the bags as I continue to try for a loose interpretation of these. It makes sense to spill over orange into the baskets. I'll wash some translucent bluish white over the apron. This will bring the darker bits into the white family and set the stage for another restatement of light shapes. I'm trying to back away from detail as I approach the bottom of the composition. I don't want to draw attention away from the more important areas of the picture. I want to give an indication of the baskets without creating too much detail. It's a balancing act.
On the other end of the value scale, I'll look for a few places where a hard contrast with the dark background might help suggest the top of a bag. I had the idea that I could improve the composition by adding another row of smaller bulbs behind the three prominent ones. So I took a photo of my painting so far and tested out my idea in Photoshop. I liked the result, so I printed out a placement guide and painted those in. I'll continue to make refinements to this piece, and I'll continue to rethink edges and make small adjustments to value and color. But whether or not I call this finished soon, or I take it in a completely different direction, I've got a good foundation in place. And the odds of a successful outcome have been enhanced by this fairly methodical approach. I hope that was helpful in some way. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Take care.